Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this XWJNE 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this converts from 12 volt DC to 120 volts AC. So let's get it open. Here we have the user manual. Let's take a quick look at it. Now I'm not going to cover everything in here. You'll want to read through it on your own. So we have some different notes. This talks about grounding. This talks about load, calculating capacity. And we have some formulas here. This talks about the pure sine wave. So this is going to be similar to the power that comes out of a power outlet. Lesser inverters might have a square sine wave or a modified sine wave. This inverter has a pure sine wave. This talks about the package contents. So we have the inverter and some cables and a remote, some fuses. This talks about battery cable parameters. This talks about fusing. This talks about the different components. And this does show different inverters here, so you want to make sure you're looking at the one that you purchased. So this would be the 2000 watt inverter. This has an LCD display. It's a remote control. And this is a wired remote. This talks about the protections built in. So there's a number of them. It has over temperature, short circuit, low, over voltage, overload, low battery, over voltage, reverse polarity protections. And here we have the specs. So let's see if I can find be right here. So you can pause and read through that. My finger's over the column. So this is 2000 watt inverter. Peak power is 4000. Input voltage on this is 12 volts. This does have USB ports, so it shows the output on that. Here we have some more notes, how to connect it. This is how to connect batteries. Trouble codes. And then we have support on the back. So let's pull this out. Here we have the remote cable, battery cables, a bag of fuses. We have the inverter itself. We have a wrench with 14 and 17 millimeters and a grounding cable. So this has a display on the top or the front or this side. It has mounting holes, it's plain on the back. On this side we have the DC terminals. So this is for your 12 volts. It has these caps to protect them. So these would be 14 millimeter. And then we have two cooling fans. Now if we go to the other side, we have a lot more stuff. We have a fault light, power light, on off switch. This is the remote connection. We have USB ports, so we have a 24 watt quick charge, 18 watt quick charge, 18 watt quick charge, and a 60 watt PD. Now you could plug a charger in here for a laptop or something, but it has a built in PD charger, and that's probably going to be more efficient because you have less circuits involved. So I'm guessing this has circuitry to convert it directly to PD 60 watt. Then we have a GFCI outlet, and then we have our terminal connector. So we have line, neutral, and ground. We have a little protector here. So you can plug right into this, or you can hardwire it. And here we have the cables. Let me get these opened up. These are around 30 inches. On this bag, we have the remote. So the cable it uses is a telephone-style cable. Looks like it has, has six conductors in it, and that will plug in here. And this is the controller. So if you mounted this in an RV, you could cut an opening this big. So the dimensions are about three and five eighths and just under two and five eighths. It's a little over three quarters of an inch thick. So you could have this mounted somewhere out of the way and then you could have this out in the open where you can read it. Then it has the fuses here. These are 40 amp fuses. So I'm going to gather some equipment and we'll hook this up and we'll test it out. Okay, so I have some batteries here and these are 100 watt hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if we look here, it says the continuous discharge is 100 amps. So 100 amps times 12.8 volts is 1280 watts. So I'll round that down to 1000 watts. So for a 2000 watt inverter, we want 2000 watts of input. So with this type of battery, you want about one of these for each 1000 watt of power. But you want to look at the ratings on your batteries itself. So you could get a 200 amp hour battery with a 200 amp output, and that would also work for this. Now, if I wanted to run a small load, like say a fan, I could just hook this up to one battery. But you want to do your own research on how to do this. So the first thing I'll do is hook up my cables to the terminals. So red goes to red, black goes to black. So when I connect the cables, there's a lock washer and a regular washer. I'm taking both washers off and I'm putting the cable right up against the plate to get the best conduction. And then I'm going to put the washers on with the lock washer last and then the nut. So I have those two terminals secure. It's probably not a bad idea to check those every once in a while. 
Now put the covers on. And I'll reposition this. Now I'm going to hook it up to the battery. Since I'm running these batteries in parallel, and I do need to hook this up here, so I have a wire between the terminals on the negative and positive sides, I want to hook the positive up to one battery and then the negative up on the second battery. If you're hooking up one, you just hook them directly up. But when you have parallel batteries, you want to hook it up to opposite ends. So if I had four batteries here, I'd hook this up to one end and then this up to the other. And that helps balance it out. Now when I hook this up, I want to make sure the power is off. Now when I hook this cable on, I have the battery, and then I have this cable, then I have the cable that's going to the second battery. Now this order may not be a huge deal, but this way, this cable is touching this battery, and it's touching the lead to the other battery. This should give us the best conduction. Okay, everything's hooked up now. Now when I hooked up that negative, I had a little spark. If you have a pre-charge resistor, you can use it there. That can be more important on larger inverters. So now I can turn this on. So it beeped, and we have the power light on. Actually, I'm going to shut this back off, and we'll hook up our communication line. So that will plug in here, and it will plug in here. So there's a switch on here and a switch on here to turn it on. Now, if I press the power on here, it's not going to turn on. You do need this switch turned on first. And now the control panel's on. And from this point, I can shut it off here and turn it on here. So the standby power of this is, I think it was 0.65 amps I read in the manual. So it's a good idea to shut it off when you're not using it. That's why these come with remotes. So let me get a little better view of this. So this is showing our input is 13.3 volts. Now I said this is a 12 volt inverter, but you're typically going to get a higher nominal voltage going into it. We show the battery. We have the output is 120 volts. We're currently drawing zero watts. It's at 22 degrees Celsius. So let's hook a load up to this. Let's start with a big load. I have an iron here. And this should be able to run an iron. So I will plug that in and it should start up right away. So we're looking at the draw. Now the fan kicked on on the inverter and we're currently drawing just under 1200 watts of power. So this is a lot. Now an iron like this is going to have an intermittent draw so it will heat up and then it will shut off and then when it cools down it will turn back on. So it just shut off and now we're going to see the power drop down. It might drop down to near nothing. Yeah, so it's at zero watts. So now when this kicks back on, it will ramp up again. So that's a pretty heavy load, although it's not a continuous load like a resistive heater would be. Now to turn that off, we just unplug it. Let's try some other loads. Here I have a power tool. It's a corded drill. I'll plug into it. We'll try it. So we look at the power draw here. So we're drawing about 160 watts there. Now that's not a tremendous amount of wattage, but I wanted to see how it ran and it ran very smoothly. If you're using a lesser inverter, you can lose power. Now along with the control here, we also have the same display on the unit itself. So if you had this in an RV, you can mount this out in an open area. But if you have this in a utility room, maybe as backup power, you may not need the remote. And in that case, you can just read this display here. Next, I'm going to hook up this fan. So I'll plug it in. I'll turn it on. So that's drawing about 37, maybe 40 watts. I'm going to move that off and I'm going to get set up here with an oscilloscope so we can look at the waveform. Okay, I hooked up my oscilloscope and we can see the waveform here. Frequency is 60 Hertz and it looks very good. Now, if this had a modified square wave, you'd see it kind of squared off at the ends here, but this is a very nice looking sine wave. 
Okay, I now have a larger load on here. I have a resistive heater. So I'll turn this on. I'll turn on the heater. So the fan is kicked on on the inverter and the heater's running, it's 1200 watts. Let's adjust the mode. That's settled at like 900, let's, I think three's the top. So now we're drawing 1,471 watts. So at this rate, it would probably drain these batteries in maybe an hour or so. so I'm going to turn that off now because it's hot out. <laughs> now I don't know that it's the most practical thing to run a resistive heater off of batteries in an inverter, but there might be cases where someone needs to do that. But this is a high draw item, so I thought it would be good for demonstration. So again, if you were installing this in an RV, you might wire in the terminals here to an outlet somewhere else in the RV. If you had this in a utility closet for backup power, you could probably plug right into it. Now this also has a USB port. So in a power outage, you might be using this to run a TV, but then you could plug in and charge your phone here, or you could also plug in a laptop. Now I wouldn't buy these just for the USB ports. There's obviously smaller USB chargers you could connect but if you're using this for other purposes, it's nice having those there so you're not taking up a whole outlet to charge devices. So that's the XWJNE 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. If you're looking for an inverter for an RV, a van build, shed, backup power, emergency power, an inverter like this can be a great option. The nice thing about this is you can build it out depending upon your needs. You could start off with a battery or two and then you could add to that. Now in a setup like here for backup power, the one component you would need to add would be to have some way to charge these batteries back up so you could use a plug-in battery charger, or you could have a solar charge setup. So a plug-in charger, you'd want to charge these up before, say, a power outage, and a solar charger, you could potentially charge them while the power is out, if the sun is out. I found this very easy to set up, run the cables to the batteries, and then just plug right into it, or hardwire it. I like that it has a remote, so in an RV, you could have this in a remote location and have this tucked away in a utility bay. Now, you do want to read all the instructions, make sure you have clearances around it, but if you have a basic understanding of doing automotive wiring and household wiring, I don't think this should be any problem. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.